Hi, well today we're putting the shingles on our cooking room and John is very kindly going to take us through how to lay the shingles. Now we've already popped a film up with John showing you how we made the shingles. So this film's all about how we actually put them on the roof and we're making good progress. Hello John. Over here we started to lay some of the shingles on this uh, six-sided structure. So it's actually a bit, bit more difficult to lay on this than a, a double-sided structure. But we can start firstly with the battens. Um, if we come around here, okay. um, you can see the battens we've laid here in amongst the smoke um, from the fire there. Um, these are laid at five inches. Um, so five inches from the top edge to this edge here, they were cut on a wood miser um, and the, the chestnut was quite green so it did move a bit so they're not entirely accurate. The important thing is the top edge is straight so we get a straight line to the okay. tile. Yeah. Um, and the gauge of five inches on the 15 inch um, shingles gives us uh, a third cover or three cover at any one point in time. What is important is the bottom uh, of the run of uh, battens is that much thicker and this one I put three battens on um, and the reason for that is the bottom one you need to kick up now the bottom one is always cut shorter as in a traditional roof tiles where you have an unreeved tile okay um, so here's some that have been laid these are only nine inches from there to there just lipped over the top of the bottom batten and the principle behind this is that if you don't put this, what I call a kicking board, but there's loads of different names. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. If you don't put it in, then the next batten that goes on top of it, um, literally the, it will go like that and leave a gap. By kicking the bottom one up, I'll show you in a minute with um, mm. a, 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 a shingle, yeah. you have a nice tight joint through there. Oh, I see, and it doesn't get catch the wind or the water doesn't get blown in either, presumably. That's right, and then the next tile will go on top of this, yeah. which we'll show you there. Uh, uh, I think a good example is on the traditional um, two-sided roof here, that if you have a look up at this point, if the sun's not in it, you can see here's the, the shorter tile and there's the full tile going through. This bottom one's kicked up, yeah, which keeps mean. it tight. Yes, yes. And in fact, yeah, it does so sort of close up the gaps, doesn't it? Looking at it, that's right. So, that's 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 an important feature of the battens. What we'll also do with this structure, it's a little bit difficult at the top because we're working with round poles. So, um, we will get to a certain point up, and then we'll measure up to the top and get a, a consistent measurement to the top and then put a board around so we then know that we'll have uniform distance between the uh, battens and the tiles as we go up. Okay. Um, the yeah. other important feature is a standard um, batten for a traditional clay or tile roof is an uh, inch and a half by yeah. uh, three quarters, i.e. Uh, 19 by 38. But here, that, that's based upon a um, distance of 400 or the old 16 inches between rafters, and they're straight rafters. When you're dealing with round poles, um, you probably can't get, it's, it's pointless to go to the uh, 400. So these are wider spacing. So what we've done on these battens is increase the size to one inch. Oh, okay. to give them a bit more stability, yeah. particularly when you're nailing in and you don't get so much vibration. Yes, I noticed that when we were laying some, there was a bit of bounce, but it That's wasn't right. bad, even it, in the middle. If, if you had a three quarter, you'd get too much bounce on it. Okay. Yeah. The other important thing is when you're actually laying the roof, it's far better that the rafters dip because you can pack up like we've done here. Okay. Yes. Um, if they yeah, they okay. dome, if they curve out, you have a problem because you've got a high point and you can only go over that high point. Most of these battens will flex to take the shape of the roof, so it won't be a, absolutely straight. It will undulate somewhat, but it's important that the main rafters on the six sides, yeah. if anything, curve out. But these subsidiary rafters curb in right, because yes. then you're, you're filling the gaps of the low points. Otherwise, you've got to cut rafters or cut battens, which weakens the structure. Yeah, so that's the main rafter there, isn't that's it? That's one of the six sides, yes. Yeah, and that's the packed. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, so that's the, 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 the laying is the simple part. Getting the battens correct and uh, is, is the more difficult part. Uh, on these first bat, uh, first shingles here, just one now because they could be caught with the second now. And this is the only time you now at the top. Um, some people it, put a secondary um, batten in there, but it's pointless. Uh, we've only got two cover at this point, but it's outside of the um, structure itself. So there's to be two cover at this point, but then from there onwards, it will be three, three cover. And this is where also you were saying earlier about the nails. So just a top only, aren't they? To the, to the, the, the top here, but on the next shingle that's laid from this one, it goes through the same point. So that will, will have two nails and so on all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's that. Uh, in terms of finishing off the, um, the, 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 the basically ridges, but in this case we've got a difficult one because we've got six sides, so the, yes. the effect of the ridges is 120 degrees. Yeah. Uh, if we look at the top of the existing barn, if you can see that, where we've got basically two 45s meeting, so roughly a 90 degree angle at the top. It's a lot yeah. easier to deal with the ridge. But if I can show you here the way we deal with the ridge, and it applies, it's a different method here, but in a normal ridge, what you would do, you have effectively two short and two longer tiles meeting at the top. Yes. So what you do is you basically take one edge like that with one, so it's over, that one's overlapping that. That's right. Yes, okay, yep. That one then overlaps there and that one ah. overlaps there. So, so in every case, if the water is going to come through, it's going to have to go down, down Yeah, it's, it's got a long journey to go <laughs> yeah, through. Yeah, not it? <laughs> um, some people do more or less the same with ridges that are laid, shingles lengthwise that are tapered. So they overlap like that, overlap like that. But again, the same principle of lapping through there. Mm -hmm. I've seen several methods that uh, have been used on the ridges. Um, some with soakers, which we're, I'll explain on this one. And others are um, basically two boards that have been rebated and overlapped so actually jointed in and jointed other. in yeah. and then laid along right. uh, difficult with handmade shingles because they're more undulating okay. um, but with if you've got sawn shingles etc that's an easy way to do it uh, and what you also do with that is the overlap is in the opposite side to the windward side so in, in this country it's west southwest so literally that would be the south direct the oh, okay. direction that way so that's just uh, that way of doing it. Uh, what we do here is we, uh, on these joints, it's much more difficult. If you have a look at this joint here, what we've done is we've um, shot these off with a plane to, so they butt up. Oh yeah. But we have a continuous gap up there. It's, it's very difficult to do the overlap because these are 120 degrees, so you can do it that way. Um, but I think it would still be possibly prone to a little bit of moisture getting in. So we use a soaker, which is what you'd use around a chimney on a traditional roof or, or whatever. Um, and the best material I find for a soaker is this very cheap plastic DPC. Oh, now, yes. Yes. Everything on these structures we've tried to take from the woods. So okay. <laughs> the so only exception is one or two bolts. So this, are you laying it in parts or as one strip? What, or what you do, if, if we come back this way, yeah. what you do is on the first one, you can lay it right, right down to the bottom because um, you uh, don't see it. It's all, all oh, covered. Yes. Yes. But on the next one, you lay it down literally six inches, nine inches down, and it's never seen. Um, so yeah. it just goes over the top of that joint and it's covered over by the um, tile above. What's nice about this mm. material is that it, A, it's strong, B, it's cheap, it's also flexible, and where, the way we lay it, so it's not exposed, it's not no sunlight get into it, so it won't deteriorate no. in the sunlight. Um, it's obviously, as um, damp proof course, it's designed to last many years anyway. Mm. So I found that's the best material to use. It's with these structures, as I say, we've made two compromises from uh, our uh, principle everything should come from the wood and that is some stainless steel rod and bolts uh, because the joints so we've have jointed this uh, here as you can see here um, oh, yes. but 
We've just strengthened it up with the stainless yeah, some steel. bolts up top, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's there. right. It's very difficult to joint those. Um, and this is, after all, uh, a um, cooking structure, just to give us a bit of shelter, as you can hear from the kettle. Oh, yes, there. <laughs> a glass fire burning. <laughs> but, um, so on these ones, if we look again on this joint here, you'll see that you can't see the DPC. No. It's under there, it's weathering the joint. No, you just really can't see it at all, can you, actually? You know, it's hidden, totally. Yeah. And uh, it makes an eye through. So if we pan out from this a little bit, you can see roughly what the shape of the or what the roof is going to look like um Lovely. i say it's quite important that uh, you once you get about halfway up take some measurements to the top where you're going to to make sure you space your battens evenly from there up otherwise uh, with these round pole structures you can't get it 100 percent in terms of um, the angles and everything else so it's just a few check measurements like that because what does show is if you don't get an equal number of tiles on it it stares you in the face yeah. every time and the very top piece is that actually going to be a hole for the smoke to come out or is there that, another slab that's there? basically a hole which we're going to put a cowl on top uh -huh. uh, those rafters will be trimmed as i say a board will go around it so a fairly sizable hole but then on top of that uh, a cowl which we will probably have a weight to one side so the default position of it will be open and then on the other side, we'll run a wire down to the one of the posts where we can wind in the wire to close it Very and good. it'll open. So uh, we've got to work that out. So up there somewhere, we're going to have to put a joint of some sort or a, a, um, a pivot that it can pivot on. But uh, the idea is a closable um, a cowl. Oh, lovely. Okay, uh, now we get on in just a second to actually lay in some of the um, shingles. Okay. Harry, the um, first thing is to these under eaves. Um, Basically, put the put the tile down. See where it rocks. If you see it, it's rocking that way. Yeah. Not rocking that way. Also, what I like to do is feel which way the grain's going, and it is running down this way. So that's that's, oh, that's, that's very that. clever. That's to stop the water getting in the grain, basically. Yeah, so, it's, it's, yeah. it's you know it makes yeah. a small difference, but not a massive one. It's, as I say, it sits better there. Yeah. Um, these uh, these nails have been blunted on the end. Okay. And we're right in the centre of a, a joist here, so between uh, joists, so it is going to bounce about a bit. As you see, now you can pre-drill these. We just got too much bounce on that. Yeah. Put solid it in my hand a bit. So well done. Probably be wise to to um, pre-drill these right in the centre. Okay. I know I was having that trouble actually around the corner, so it's you're not alone. <laughs> now well, that one sits better on that way. Yep. And again, we've got the Green. joist right there. Here we're a bit nearer the uh, joist. So what you'll see here... It's a bit more solid, isn't it? It goes straight in. in. Yeah, well done. Great. So hence you can see why we need the... Um, the thicker, thicker battens. Yes, yeah, it illustrates it very well, actually. Yeah. Right, this one we now we've got to cut to size. Okay. Got a pencil here, if you want. Right, the way I like to cut them the size is we just trim with them an axe. You see we're okay at that end. We just need a bit of trim in here. Yeah. Just down this little side here, if the pencil works. <laughs> Sorry, it's one of these funny propellers. There we are. Um, so we're literally trimming this side here. Yeah. Down through here. And I'll do that with the axe. Great, so okay. take your pencil. Cheers. So I can see where I need to trim again with the side axe. And down like so. There we are. Good stuff. Does it fit? Perfect. Yeah. There we are. It fits yeah. there. Well done. Give it in line. Again, we're going to get some bounce on this. I'll try and hold it as well if I can. Just well, I don't think that's going to make no. a lot of difference, no. frankly. 
the, the important thing is because we have um, blunted the ends, it's not splitting out. Yeah. And again, this is a little bit nearer there. The other one was right in the centre. So let's go in down. Great. So there's your first under ease. So we now start the next layer. What I normally have um, when I'm laying these is a little platform where you can stack them on the battens oh, yeah. above. Yeah. I've also got a little chopping, uh, a little platform for trimming. So we just went down to trim, but when I'm up here, I'll have stacks of um, shingles and I can just trim it with a little hatchet Very uh, good. to suit. But uh, today we've got a work party here, so lots of people doing stuff around. So this is a bit of an impromptu situation. So we take the first one of these, um, without the others all falling down. <laughs> um, and basically, now if you can see where we when we're laying this one on, yes, how it fits nice and snugly at the end. Now, if we didn't have that kicking board underneath, that tile below would have dropped and this one would be hanging there with a bit of a gap. Yeah. So I can't emphasise how important the, the, kicking, the actual kicking, the kicking board, board is. is. Yeah, the nice thick bit down there. Yeah. Now the second tile, um, these nails may not, that should be just about long enough, I think. Um, the second one goes through the second batten down. So you can see this one here that's now oh, there. Oh yes, yes. And then we'll pinch the one below as well. So it means that they've all got two nails from, and it means we can only have to put one in here. So these are clout nails with the bigger heads. They're a little bit too thick for what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's all we could get at the moment. They tend, to, as you get longer, they tend to go up in, in the thickness. And now we're through, and we go straight through, and that's, Nicely nice. pushed that yes. in. Nice yeah, and so you've got double securing basically, as you're saying, both layers. Okay. And a similar one with this next one. And so you get yourself organised, get up here with piles of them, and then you can just run them in. Um, this is particularly difficult because the edges take time, frankly. Yeah, you couldn't get a, probably a more difficult roof if you tried, could you really? It's uh, you can see here the detail close up, the one's going on there. Yeah. yeah. And at the corner I've been working on, it's taken a lot of time on the actual corner bits. Right, it's the second one going on here, going which way does it fit? Probably feel it fits a bit better that way. Mm, yeah. Um, having said that, Let's try it this way up. That is the right way. Play around till it gets it right. Now actually that's about the most stable I think. This is going to bounce about quite a bit because of um, through here. Yeah. Probably worth coming up with an electric drill and just do it once through. Yeah. Once you're through. Yeah, nice. Then fine. Yeah. So that's the basic principle as we take it through. And then the next layer, obviously, and we come up one. And here we are. Try and get them to butt up here. This is the important thing. That's going to be exposed. Nice tight joint there. If you have to trim them, trim them. We've got a bit of roughness on this one, so that we keep to the top, come what may. That, that. And so, John, we've got like three layers. Here now, haven't yep. we? Here we've got the two layers, but is that how it remains? That's how it remains yes. because that's that over sale in the building. Yeah. Uh, you could have put uh, an extra batten in and had another layer. It's a bit there. Far. <laughs> a little distraction there. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you could have uh, had another layer there. Yes. But, um, yeah. You know, this exactly. is a shelter. For exactly, us, it's not a, yeah. Uh, if you're doing the, uh, 
of building for habitation, then that would be yeah, different. Yeah, good. So once again, we're looking to go through this to the batten below there, which is there. Yeah. Good. So that's it. Is that principle for the rest of the roof, isn't it? Yeah. I look, look, some of these we need slightly longer nails. These, these first ones were 40 mil nails. These are 50 nil nails, but we can probably do with a 65 in there. Okay. Um, yeah. Because so it's got the extra. I, I might put an depth. extra one there now. Yeah. As you see, that's just cool. Bouncing that's, a bit. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So that's, that's that's the basic principle. You can see on the angles there how they trimmed it. Uh, you need your wider shingles for those angles if you're doing that. But yeah. normally, you've got a standard roof and you do the eaves either end, work then towards the middle and fill in in the middle. On this structure, we're having to take up the corners first and then work towards the middle. Um, but that's a normal way of doing it. Don't start in the middle and work to one end. Start on the end so you get a nice clean finish and then work to the middle. It's basic principles of any roofing job, really. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, thank you very much indeed. That's great. Okay. Thanks, thanks, John. Well, we've been making very good progress with the roof, so hope you enjoyed watching that film and thanks very much for watching.